So first, off the top, your reaction uh, to the events in Pensacola and, and what the White House is seeing right now. Well, of course, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with everybody there and in the entire state of Florida. It's, it's really it's horrible and it's tragic. Um, we also want to really thank first responders, as always, who run into danger. Uh, so that's first and foremost. We are, we're looking into it. We can't get ahead of the investigation, as you just said uh, yourselves. The FBI is looking into it, and we need to trust the federal investigators to do that. Uh, as the president said, though, we will get to the bottom of it. You know, he always puts America first and America's safety first, and so I trust that this mm -hmm. president will get to the bottom Absolutely, of it. Stephanie. And this president has also been direct going back to the campaign about saying that he's disappointed that the previous president, Barack Obama, would not call out Islamic terror when it was Islamic terror. So will this president follow what Matt Gates, his Republican ally uh, down in Florida, has said, which is that this was terror? I think that once the, the investigation concludes, and that is in fact what it is, the president will act swiftly and he will do all he can to make sure that this does not happen again. And Stephanie, we've seen Governor Ron DeSantis, who has said that Saudi Arabia owes us a debt now. Does President Trump agree? You know, I haven't spoken to President Trump about that. I know that he and Governor DeSantis spoke and that he offered the full support of the White House and all the resources that could be provided. So I know that the uh, president has spoken with him and will stay in contact with him and is going to do everything he can to help the state uh, recover. Stephanie, there was some breaking news overnight, uh, really good news uh, for our country, which is that an American citizen who, as you know, is a grad student at Princeton University, uh, had been held hostage in Iran. Uh, the president uh, has now gotten him freed, released. Um, uh, and his key uh, advisor on all this, Brian Hook, helped secure that. Uh, what do you know about that? But big picture as well. We've seen the president do this in North Korea and other hot spots around the world, get Americans freed. You know, I, I would like to say that uh, the president oftentimes gets criticized for some of his relationships with some of the uh, tougher countries, as you would call them. But he's obviously getting results, and it's saving lives. So the president continues to have results overseas in many ways. Uh, NATO, he was just there. But with something like this that is life-saving, I, I believe that that's something that people should consider when they are uh, criticizing the president for some of the people that he talks to. He's got an obligation to talk to world leaders, and again, he's, he's getting results and he's saving lives, American lives. Stephanie, certainly good news. Anything to the timing here as we see a lot of unrest inside Iran? Uh, that we've heard of over a thousand people killed, even more detained. Uh, the regime there under a great deal of pressure. So is this a result of, of policies under this administration? Absolutely. It is absolutely a result of the, uh, the president's policies, again, domestically and overseas are working. Uh, we've got the jobs numbers that just came out, too, if I can get to those, uh, 266,000 jobs uh, in November. So the president's um, policies are working, and again, they're saving lives, and they're lifting up Americans. Well, let's go to those jobs numbers. You just mentioned it. Uh, 266,000 jobs created in the month of November alone, wages up. Um, these, these numbers, uh, the critics of the president who haven't supported his policies or are trying to impeach him, what in the world can they say to, to numbers like this? <laughs> I mean, I hope that they can say congratulations and it's a great thing for America. And in fact, I would encourage all of your viewers to go to uh, the top of the president's Twitter account. He's got, he's got a great montage of all of the media outlets having to actually congratulate and acknowledge the great work that he's done for this country. Um, again, I would hope that everybody is just happy and, and acknowledging that the president's doing a good job. With regard to the impeachment, you know, they have not been able to produce any evidence while the president continues to produce results. So I think the American people are seeing that. Well, and Stephanie, staying on jobs, what do you think we're going to see from Congress on USMCA? You know what? That's up to Nancy Pelosi. That should have been done a long time ago. Um, we are hoping that it will go through. There's many things sitting on her desk that should be going through. Um, and, and instead, she's playing games, silly games that are at the detriment to the, to the American people. Stephanie, let's get back to impeachment because you and others in the White House, starting with the president himself, had been demanding for weeks that the president get due process, that he get his lawyer in there when Adam Schiff was down in the basement uh, having those depositions and, and witnesses coming in. Now they offer you, Jerry Nadler, to bring your lawyer up, mount a defense, why did the White House say we don't want to participate? We're not going to participate in a sham hearing that doesn't give him any rights. They get to choose all kinds of things. They keep moving the goalposts, moving the rules. I'll also mention to people that the president was overseas when they invited him to be a part of that, that silly hearing. So that, that timing was on purpose, and everybody knows it. We're not going to legitimize this hearing that has been absolutely ridiculous from the start. Uh, the only evidence they have is the actual transcripts that the president <laughs> produced that show he did nothing wrong. This last judiciary hearing with those, those three witnesses, 
witnesses uh, calling out a 13-year-old son and very biased witnesses. The whole thing is a sham and it's got to stop. Um, it's clearly not going to and if it does move to the Senate, we look forward to that well, because it will be fair. And Stephanie, so Speaker Pelosi sparred with a reporter on Thursday. I want to play you some sound and then get some uh, response from you. Do you hate the president, Madam Speaker? Because I don't, I don't hate anybody. And as a Catholic, I resent your using the word hate in a sentence that addresses me. We are here today because the Republicans in the House are paralyzed with hatred of President Clinton. And until the Republicans free themselves of this hatred, our country will suffer. So as you can see there, she's saying one thing previously, another thing now. But do you think, is this personal for Democrats, impeachment? I think this is very personal, and I would say that, you know, she, she said as a Catholic, she is very upset. As an American citizen, I am very upset that the Democrats are trying to not only divide this nation, but have been trying to take this president down since before he was even elected to office. So, yeah, I do think it's very clear that this is personal. They, they attack the president. They attack the first family. That's personal. That is, that is not anything other. And, and the fact that she keeps saying this isn't political also really... I'm, I'm very confused by that. Stephanie, the standard she set was overwhelming, compelling, and bipartisan. And when you mention it's that her saying it's not about uh, politics, she says it's patriotic. It's all about patriotism for her, and she's prayerfully considering the road of impeachment for this president. How do you, what do you say to the speaker on that? Uh, well, I, I would say that she should she should be thinking about the country they are dividing the country so if that's not political if that's not personal i don't know what else is if she's praying for the country she should be trying to unite it they are trying to divide it it's got to stop so stephanie it's interesting because on your point here we've got a picture of this sweatshirt the democrats are now raising money with don't mess with Nancy. If this is about the Constitution, if we're entering this prayerfully and trying to come together as a nation, why in the world are they raising money like that? I mean, because they're not raising money any other way. Hmm. <laughs> well, Short and there sweet. There you go. Yeah. Sometimes that <laughs> helps us do our jobs, too. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> the way to do it. All right, well, Stephanie Grisham, we appreciate you coming in. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.